In this video, we're going to tie a fly called the Wally Wing Mayfly. First thing we're going to do is start with some Vivas 14 knot brown thread and a TMCO 100 SP BL hook. Next thing we're going to do is start with a nice big mallard feather. I'm going to strip back all the fluff from the base of this feather, just exposing the nice clean front part of the feather. Then I'm going to hold the feather here by the tip. I'm just going to coax the fibers of the feather back onto the stem of the feather. Just like that. And I want to do so evenly as I can, meaning I have a perfect little even point there where I've pulled back all the barbs. And if you have one straggler, you can always pull that straggler forward and just change the little point where you're splitting the feather. Now you can see this feather has a curve to it. I'm just going to take my fingers and just kind of kink the fibers up with the curve. Kind of making a little V there with the feather. And then I'm going to hold the feather so that the tip of the feather faces forward onto the hook. I'm just going to take it and pinch that little V and pull all those fibers forward. You want to do this as even as you can. Just like that. And I want my wing to be about the length of the shank of the hook, so I just roughly measure that out. Do a nice loose wrap of thread and then bite down with my thread nice and tight. Then you can trim out some of these barbs here. Then you can trim out the stem, kind of making a little taper as you cut it so that we can transition to our body there. Then I'll make my way forward, pull that wing up, and lay down some wraps right in front of the wing. This will help kind of prop it up and stand it straight up just like a mayfly wing. Then I'll take my thread back down here to the body and we're going to tie in the tail. For that we're going to use some moose mane. I'm just going to take three fibers from the moose mane. I'm going to even up the tips of those fibers as even as I can get them. I'm going to tie those in so they're about the length of the body on the hook. If you don't get them even right when you tie them in you can always take them off and try to do it again here. Doesn't look like I got them quite as even as I wanted. There we go. That's pretty close. You trim those out and you want to tie in these tails right on top of the shank of the hook even as you can. And you can kind of push those tails forward. That'll help just kind of spread them out. And I'll lay down a couple wraps just to help coax them to spread out just like a little mayfly tail. Three little tails just like that. Then we can spiral our thread forward once more. And we're going to tie in the body material, or the rib, I should say, which is just some 6 aught thread. We'll tie a black rib today, but you can do whatever you like. You can do a brown rib, an olive rib, whatever the look 
it is that you're going for. Tie this all the way back here to the bend. Now we're ready to dub the body. I'm going to take some super fine dubbing. You can use whatever color you want for the dubbing. We're going to use kind of a Hendrickson pink color. And I want to put on just enough to coat the thread to begin with. And I'm just going to tie this in right here at the tail. Then I'll work my way forward. Just applying a little bit at a time, not too much. You got to be really careful that you don't overdo it with the dubbing. It's really easy to put too much on at once and overdo it. It looks like I have a little too much, so I'll just peel some of it off of that thread there and just finish it off. There we are. Then I'm going to take that thread and I'll just give it a quick little twist. I'm just going to counter wrap that thread around the body here. Some nice wide spirals. Usually only takes two or three. Then I can capture that thread. Now we're ready for the hackle. For that I'm going to use a whiting rooster cape feather. I'm just going to find one here that's about the size that I want. I want that feather to just kind of reach back down the point of the hook. And I can tie it in. We're using a dark bar ginger color. You can also use brown, grizzly, just really whatever, whatever color you're looking to imitate. I'll lay down just a few more wraps here right in front of the, the wing just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Take my thread to the eye and we're ready to wrap our hackle. Nice smooth even wraps here and we'll jump in front of our wing lay some wraps right up against it then we can capture that feather. Trim that out of there. And you can whip finish nice and carefully. Now for the magic of the fly. We're going to take the tip of the feather here and I'm just going to peel away one little barb from the tip of the feather. Then I'm just going to take it and just peel it, pull it down to the bottom of the wing. Then I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. I'm just going to peel away one fiber. Here we are, and then just peel it down to the base as well. Then you can get in here and trim out the stem as carefully as you can. You can even break it out of there just like I did. And then you want to stand up these wings. Careful not to touch them or mangle them too much. I usually like to just give them 
a little bit of a pull just to open them up and make them look a little bit more like a wing. I like nice full wings on my Wally Wing Mayflies. But you got to be really careful and really ginger with those wings that you don't smush them or mangle them. And you can finish your tail here. And that's all there is to the Wally Wing Mayfly. Great little Mayfly pattern. Sits on the water with really a nice profile, but uh, a lot easier to tie than you would you would think. They're not they're not as difficult to tie as they look. The wing can be a pretty intimidating look, and they look a lot harder than they are to actually tie. And that is the Wally Wing Mayfly.